good morning. It's actually, it's 8.42 my time. Recording this, this is a lot earlier than I usually get started on videos. Um, uh, yesterday, Tuesday, um, I was <laughs> functioning on maybe at the most three hours of sleep. Uh, I slept poor, you need to know this, I slept very poorly on Monday night. Uh, any of you have heart problems of whatsoever or anything of that nature, sleep is a premium. Sleep is a premium. It's a luxury sometimes. I know Dr. Berg talks about, you know, eight hours. Well, Dr. Berg, bless your heart. Wish you would get saved, Dr. Berg. But, um, you know, sleep is a premium. It really is. And uh, myself personally, uh, I, I'm doing well if the Lord allows me five. That's, that's a good amount of sleep for me, five hours. But yesterday, um, also having weird phone issues yesterday. <laughs> weird. But yesterday, um, I, I was in bed by, you, you need to know this. Um, I was in bed by six o'clock at night and I, I was out dude I was out I got up nice and early to D um, with stuff to speak about so um, like I said you needed to know that <laughs> but um, today we are going to be addressing a video that a dear dearly beloved brother sent um, a couple days ago uh, which we are getting going to get to today but uh, please get your authorized version of the scriptures commonly referred to as the King James Version KJV okay there's nothing wrong with calling uh, referring to the scriptures as the King James Version there's nothing wrong with that okay uh, these are the scriptures this is the perfect inerrant given by inspiration word of God your preference does not matter when it comes to what God hath said God hath chosen the authorized version this is his work okay preference has nothing to do with it okay it's not that I prefer the authorized version this this is what he gave this is what is perfect okay all right so please, if you happen to have an authorized version, please go ahead and grab your authorized version and read along with me at the scriptures that we will be looking at today, okay? Please. It's important for you to do this for two reasons. Number one, number one, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, okay? You need to see the scripture for yourself. I ain't doing fancy schmancy stuff like putting the scripture verse up on the screen for you. I think that breeds laziness. Okay? I mean, if it's the only option you have, it's the only option you have. Okay? But um, you need to see it with your own eyes. You need to be, you know, you need to rustle the leaves yourself. Okay? Number one. Number two. I make mistakes okay I'll, I'll get going and I'll, I'll start reading too quickly excuse me too uh, speedily too, uh, too speedily hurriedly sometimes and sometimes I will mispronounce sometimes I'll skip a groove okay so it's imperative that you are looking at it yourself Number one, for the benefit of you seeing it yourself. And number two, it's like, hey, Brad, 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 you, oh, Brad. Okay? I make mistakes. Okay? So, you see, you, you trust the scripture. You trust the scripture. All right? Brad, you're saying, no! Trust the scripture. Okay? Trust the scripture. Don't trust me. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, trust this, the scripture, because I make mistakes, okay, I, I've been wrong about things, 
Okay, I have. And when I'm wrong and the Lord shows me through a brother, or, you know, through the scripture or a sister through the scripture, I make the correction and I keep them public so you know that who is speaking to you is just a man. Just a man. Okay? So, be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? Get, get the scriptures and read along with me. Word for word, verse by verse. Okay? Alright? Today, we're going to be addressing, like I said, a video that a brother sent. But uh, there's going to be a couple of rabbit trails within this. But we're going to be addressing this thing of wisdom. Now, people will often confuse wisdom and knowledge being the same thing. They are different things. However, they're like peas and carrots. Okay? It's like they, they, the one encompasses the other. The other encompasses the other. Okay? They are the product. One, the wisdom is the, sta is the starting point. Wisdom will lead into understanding. Understanding into knowledge. We're, we're going to see this. Okay? We're going to see this. Okay? But it starts with wisdom. The one encompasses the other, but they are two different things. They are. Okay? They can be used interchangeably, but at their... Be they can. They can. Yes, they can. But at its root, the fear of the Lord... That is wisdom. And apart from evil is understanding. The knowledge of the holy, that which is other, is understanding. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those are not contradictory terms. They are not. It's telling you that it starts true understanding, true knowledge begins with wisdom that starts from the fear of the Lord. True. True. In James chapter 3, there are only two wisdoms. Okay? There's not a plethora of wisdoms out there. There is only two. There are only two. Okay? James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Beginning at verse 13 on to the close. Who is, as, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Now see right there in that verse, wise equated with what? Wisdom. Knowledge. You see wisdom also in the text. Conversation. Okay? And, and the same brother who sent this to me was one of the ones who were like, uh, you know, Brad, Conversation does not only, only encompass what you say, okay? You know, you can have a conversation with someone without saying a word. How? Uh, the phrase is body language, okay? That is a legitimate thing, okay? You can have, you can have a conversation with someone without ever saying a word. And for us saints, ambassadors for Christ... Faith coming by, cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What happens when you run into someone who doesn't want to hear it? When they don't want to hear the words of the Lord. What happens? What are you left with? The conversation of the language that proceeds from you in meekness of wisdom, fear of the Lord, how you behave. So conversation is not only relegated to speaking. Okay? It isn't. It's also your behavior. Okay? This is why, guys, these easy believers and devils are so dangerous because they only work in the sphere of words. Okay? Alright? Like I say to you, if you were to meet me personally, and apparently I'm going to be meeting, we're going to be meeting a brother. We'll see how that goes, Lord willing. But the, the one you're looking at is the one that you're going to meet out there. Okay? This is who you will meet if we meet personally. 
Okay? I'm like, because <laughs> it's, so, I'm sorry, that was a little crude. But, I mean, the, the what you see is what you're going to get. Okay? What you see is what you're going to get. With these people on YouTube and other platforms, you're only seeing, now granted, a majority of you are only going to see this of me. That is true. This is true. But you see, once the cameras are off, and it's just you, the Lord, and the four walls, ceiling, and the floor, that's the measure. And who and what you are when the cameras are not rolling, when it's the four walls, the ceiling, and the floor, that is the measure of a man. Not a man. A man. A man. Okay? Got to remember that. So conversation in company, and like I said, the, dear, the same brother who sent this video that we're going to look at later, uh, is like Brad, you know, conversation is a little bit more than just words. Amen. Amen. Okay, now let's continue in the scriptures. Okay. Verse 14. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Okay, this is showing you the two wisdoms. But is earthly. Man was made of dirt. And you know what's interesting? Brethren, Genesis chapter 2. Man was made of dirt. From whence cometh woman? Woman, by the way, means of man. Genesis chapter 2. Read that today. Back in the book of Genesis today. You needed to know that. But think about that one, brethren. Think about that. Think about that. And you sisters, praise the Lord for a woman who fears the Lord. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right? But think about that. Roll that around in your head a little bit. Man was made of dirt. We are dirt. We are dirt. But when came woman of man, of man who came from dirt, okay? You got to remember that one. That was something I was reminded of this morning. It's like, ah, we are all dirt. Ashes that from dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return, okay? Woman was taken out of man. Woman was made for man, not man for woman, okay? I know a lot of you feminazis out there got a problem with that. Uh, your problem is with the Lord, not with anything I'm saying, okay? But uh, remember that, okay? Remember that. Remember that, okay? But this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly of the earth, of dirt, sensual, led by the senses. You know, the five senses that Ignace, Ignatius de Loyola talks about in his spiritual exercises devilish devilish that's the one wisdom and it begins with earthly earthly men men for where envying and strife is there is confusion in every evil work on Monday uh, I'm good talk a little about this twit. Monday's video, we addressed a deluded, disgusting heretic who's following an agenda. One not of his own. He's under orders. And I'm not even going to... The name of the wicked will rot. And as I emailed a beloved today about this, it's like, hmm... This individual that was in Monday's video, which will be in the description box... Um, is an example of this wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Uh, it, it appeals to flesh to say, well, how righteous are you if we are to forgive Satan and love Satan? That, that's, that's lunacy. But see, the point of that is it's so over the top, so outrageous that it garners attention. It gets people to notice. Uh, look at me, look at me. And the best way to deflate these devils 
let them alone. They are blind leading the blind. And very quickly, uh, before we get any further, if you are someone who is deceived by that, I'm not even going to say his name. That's what he wants. That's what he's feeding off of. Okay, like that dog. Okay. Um, if you are deceived by this individual, uh, a novice could be, but if you're a novice with the Lord in you, sealed until the day of redemption, the Lord's going to be like, uh, hey, 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 you know. But um, if you are willfully deceived by that man, I have no pity or compassion for you. I, I, I don't. I, I have no pity or compassion for any of you who are willfully deceived by the man that we speak about on Monday. I'm not even going to mention the man's name. Okay? Not even gonna, the name of the wicked will rot. Okay? All right? But anyway, just just wanted to may, uh, bring that up because that's an example of this wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, and we're going to look at numerous amounts of scriptures today to back this up, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. See, the vessels in which the Lord dwells within, the sagging sin suit, this is where sin is. Okay, in the flesh. All right? The Lord within the saint. The Lord cannot and will not sin. Flesh that we are in sins. Okay? But the Lord within you does not sin. Can't sin. We sin every day. All right? And the Lord himself is without partiality and without hypocrisy. Okay? All right? But see, that wisdom, we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We are to work out what the Lord has put in, i.e., himself. But see, we're, we're men. We're men. We're men. We make mistakes. Unless you're a perfect, sanctified creature, you know, Blackpool or something. Or... A perfectly sanctified creature from me. Yes, I did. Shh. Leave it alone. Okay? Most of us make mistakes. Okay? Most of us make mistakes. Most of us. I, I say that kind of in jest. Because, uh, you know, you sin every day. And when you come across these twits, uh, the, the individual that I made reference to on Monday who defended Jean Boshoff. Don't know who he is. Keep it that way. Defended him, who was uh, one who said, oh, I don't sin anymore. I uh, would not be surprised if that uh, nitwit twit um, that was in Monday's video will eventually lead on to the, well, you got to stop sinning. <laughs> I would not be surprised at all. When you are convoluted, when you are subverted um, with devils, that's, that, that, hey, the sky's the limit. Let's finish this up. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And blessed are the feet that bringeth good tidings and publisheth peace. And these devils are saying, peace, peace. There is no peace. There is no peace to the wicked. The peace that they offer you is a sham. It's a facade, people. Uh, it's a peace. The peace that the devil, that Christianity, that the free grace people offer you is a false peace. It's a peace and to be at peace with sin under a delusion that you save yourself by your own belief. That's why, by the way... The individual that we talked about Monday, that's why he targeted the free grace crowd. Because the Athenians like to do nothing but what? Talk about some new thing. Okay? 
Anyway, Proverbs 14, verses 8 on to verse 10. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. Look, before we keep, keep reading, look at that. Look at it. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from, and to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Okay? Those are not contradictory statements. Those are statements that come together. Okay? That's, that's not a contradiction. Fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. What is evil? Well, to know what truly is good and truly is evil, you need a perfect standard to judge yourself by and others by. But you see, Christianity comes along with, yea, hath God said. And they go to the Greek. We, we talked about this Monday, and that video will be in the description box for you. I, I almost am uh, uh, reluctant to, to share it because any ex exposure in any way, shape, or form to the man that we addressed on Monday, it's, it's gravy to him. Okay? You have to understand the mindset of these devils. And you can understand that simply by reading scripture. Okay? But, looking at verse 8 again, the wisdom of the prudent. Prudence. Okay? There is a prudence that masks itself as wisdom, but yet it is earthly, sensual, devilish. And there is a true wisdom that has prudence in understanding, departing from evil, that its base is upon the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Wow! <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Okay? The wisdom of the prudent is to understand His, His way. Now, you can say your own way in that, yes, you can. Yes, you can. But is your way reflected, reflective of his way for you today? Now, let's continue the verse. But the folly of fools is deceit. Fools. Today is the 26th, by the way. Fools. Fools. Not with the little E at the end of it. You know, like the comedy. You know. My life is nothing but a comedy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's one of the last Hollywood movies that I actually saw. <laughs> Leave it alone. Okay? And verse 9. Fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous there is favor. Who declares our righteousness today? The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Under the law, which was faith and works, you were righteous because you did what God said according to the law, and your hope was in God that he would honor you from faith to faith. Okay? The faith under the Old Testament, under the law, was God would honor you by doing what was said in the law. Today, your faith is, it's finished! The death, burial, and resurrection. That's like in Romans where it says from faith to faith. That's what that means. Okay? Alright? Fools make a mock at sin. It is sin to say, to love Satan. To forgive Satan. Uh, you're forgive, saying to forgive something that the Lord himself does not forgive. That's sin. And fools make a mock at sin. Oh, well, we'll, we'll, see. we'll see what a fool is according to Scripture. Don't worry about it. Don't get ahead of me. Okay? Verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermittle with his joy. Who could the stranger be? The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger. Someone who believes in their heart that they are their own God. Someone who says in their heart that there is no God. Capital G. A stranger. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ. A stranger doth not intermittle with his joy. Let them alone. Let them eat and drink for tomorrow they shall die. So it's like, you know, have a great life, dude. Because this is your best life now. This is the best life you're ever going to have because the life that awaits you people who say in your own heart there is no God 
but you are your own God. This is your best life. And a stranger, what's strange to you? Stranger is someone contrary to what you are, right? The stranger, right? The Lord Jesus Christ. Hey! You want to believe a lie? You want to believe in nonsense? The Lord will oblige you and leave you alone. Hey, hey man, you know that? Roll up another one and fire up that whiskey and throw it at your head, dude. Have a great life. Have a great life. You know why? Because this is your best life now. Beg your pardon, it's very spicy today. <laughs> this is your best life now. Live it up, buddy. Okay? Uh, Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, not 16. Verses 1 and 2. Through desire. Are your desires based upon Scripture, upon what the Lord would have? Or is it, I, 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 me, me, me? Through desire, a man, your man, dirt, having separated himself, seeketh and intermittleth with all wisdom. And there's only two wisdoms. There's only two. All wisdom. You want to mess around. You want to be like Solomon. Play both sides. And have your cake and eat it too. It don't work that way. One of the wisest men that ever lived tried it and failed. That's I'm talking about Solomon. You could read his diary, basically. I know it wasn't really his diary, but I mean, it could have been. I don't know. But the book of Ecclesiastes, which was written by King Solomon, uh, he tried to play both sides. And he had the access and the means to do it, boy. And he failed miserably. Okay? But the, through desire, lust, covetousness, what kind of desire? A man having separated himself seeketh and intermittleth with all. All wisdom. You know, not all wisdom, there's only two, shouldn't be messed with. A fool hath no delight in understanding departing from evil or the knowledge of the holy, but that his heart may discover itself. Go back to Proverbs 14. Let's pick up at verses 12 under verse 14. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. I mean, you're going to see this demonstrated in the video. But the end thereof are the ways of death, and the wages of sin is death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful. You know, they, the, a lot of these guys, especially the guys who are uh, purporting these things, their laughter is sorrowful because somewhere they got to know that this is the best life. Especially these guys who are willfully serving the Vatican, like the gentleman, gentleman, excuse me, like the imbecile that we talked about on Monday, uh, the guy from Blackpool, uh, several people here in America, the Elmer from New York, Mr. Sunken Eyed. These are guys who are knowingly serving the Vatican serving Satan. So they, ha, 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 fools make a mock at sin. Laugh, Philip, fuzzball. Because the end thereof is death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. Because where are you going to go? Just believe in everything, you're going to hell. So, that's why I tell people who are lost, who don't want to hear it, Live it, have a great life. Enjoy your life, man. Enjoy your life because this is the best you're going to get. To that individual on Monday, hey, you having a good time, you know? Feeding the, having your fires fueled by all the spites and all the uh, guys, you know, hey, it's a new thing. Let's everybody jump on the bandwagon and puff this. See, it, it works together. That's why the guy from Monday's video targeted the easy believism crowd. Because a little fire sparks, and then one guy's going to do it, one, 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 and it, this, this whole barrage of people exposing this guy, and <laughs> he has been exposed, but 
any to these guys who work for the Vatican like that guy and the guy from England. They're both from England anyway, but and sorry for you guys from England. But see, it works that hey, he's getting publicity. They're getting publicity. Any publicity is good publicity. You got to remember that. We're going to see that demonstrated in Proverbs 26 today, okay? Okay, you got to remember that. That's why you cut it off, brother. Don't keep regurgitating, okay? I mean, making mention like I am in the in her video, but when you make that individual the focal point and continue, it just it just living it up like basking in like the professional wrestling heel whose job it is to garner the booze of the crowd. Okay, you can learn a lot about what's going on today when you examine the psychology of professional wrestling. The heel, the bad guy's job, is to garnish, to garner the booze and the cuckles from the crowd. That's why I often um, um, compare what's happening today, especially within Christianity, to a professional wrestling angle. The, you got them playing this both sides, see. Okay, well let's continue. It's spicy in here. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. You reap what you sow. And a good man shall be satisfied with himself. Now go to Proverbs 28. Satisfied with himself. Hmm. That Remember, dispensational difference. Because today, especially if you are saved. Wow, it's spicy in here. It's hot in here, boy. <laughs> Today, if you are saved, you have the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, dwelling within you. Okay? You do. If you're a saved individual. And He will lead you and guide you into all truth. But someone in Proverbs 28, verses 25 and 26, who are their own gods, he that is a proud heart, he that is of a proud heart, Stirreth up strife, proud heart. What is a fool? We're going to look at that next. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. What is a fool? What is a fool? Psalm, Psalm 14. Psalm 14. Now, Psalm 14 and Psalm 53 are basically identical, basically, but as you will see, there are differences between them. And they are not contradictory one in with the other. Okay, they are basically saying the same thing, and there is only one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body, like you and I are made in the image thereof. Okay, remember, the Trinity is satanic. Psalm 14, what is a fool? The fool has said in his heart, of, we're reading to verse uh, 4, by the way. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, capital G. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Capital G. Ye shall be as gods, little g. See, a fool says in his heart that there is no actual capital, capital G God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But what have they replaced that with? The little g God themselves. That's how that works. A fool says in his heart, there is no actual capital G, God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and the Holy Ghost says that spirit. Okay? They say that there is no actual God. But see, they have replaced that with what? Themselves. The little G God. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? 
The full of Psalm 53, verses 1 under verse 4, we're going to compare these, okay? Verse 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. And compare that with Psalm 14, it says abominable works. When you call yourself your own standard, when you are your own God, okay, it is abominable iniquity and an abominable work. Okay, calling yourself your own God. Verse 2 in Psalm 14. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. Verse 2 in Psalm 53. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. And who is God save the Lord? Okay? Boy, it's spicy in here. <laughs> Sweat is just, oh, wow. And I even got a fan going, okay? God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Let's read verse 3 in Psalm 53. Every one of them has gone back. They are all, they are together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Verse 3 in Psalm 14. They are all gone aside. They, they are all together become filthy. There is none that good, doeth good. No, not one. So Psalm 53 says, singular, every one under the law. Okay. But Psalm 14 says all. See, there's no escaping it. Everyone to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Greek is Gentile, by the way. All are out of the way. Unless you are saved. Okay? They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Verse 4 in Psalm 14. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? Verse 4 in Psalm 53. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Knowledge which comes from what? Wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Who eat up my people as they eat bread. They have not called upon God. And in verse 4 and 14, it says the Lord. Okay? <laughs> One second, brethren. Get this thing closer to me. Wow! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it is spicy in here. It is hot in here. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> but whatever, it is what it is, okay? Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Verses 31 on to verse 34. Psalm 18, 31 on to 34. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? And Jesus is the rock. Not Dwayne Johnson. Now that is a lower case R. Yes it is. But Jesus Christ is the rock. Not Peter. You go to the Greek. And which one. Which Greek are you talking about? It is God that girdeth me with strength. Capital G. Of course. And maketh my way perfect. Not sinlessly perfect. In the way that we. You know. God doesn't force anything on us. But, here's the perfect standard by which we should live. It is God that girdeth me with strength, and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like his feet, and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Let's read verse 35. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Verse 34, teacheth. How does he teach? Who teacheth like the Lord? But where are we supposed to learn things? Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Where is the law found? In the scriptures. 
The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Where do you get the testimonies of the Lord? Authorized version. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them, by what? By the statutes, commandments, and stuff like that. But where do you get that? Right here, the authorized version. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward dispensational difference there, but faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? The individual from Monday's video too, by the way, is not using any scripture to back up any of his arguments. Because he can't. And just like someone who, uh, Jean Bashoff, who he glorified, <laughs> he's going in that same shoe. He is. Best way to deflate this devil is to ignore him. And hopefully he'll burn himself up. Okay. Now go to Proverbs 26. The proverb of today. Now we have established what a fool is. Proverbs 26. We're just going to casually read from verses 1 on to verse 12. Okay. Proverbs chapter 26. As snow in summer, out of place, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. Someone who says in their heart there is no capital G God, but yet they have replaced that with the little G God themselves. As a bird by wandering, and the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. That's self-explanatory. You reap what you sow. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Verse 4. Answer not a fool according to his folly. You don't fight fire with fire, or else, lest thou also be like unto him. I have failed at that on several occasions, you know, in losing my temper, okay? And that's a tactic of the enemy, of the devil. They will purposely do things to draw you away, to draw you away from uh, com being composed, from keeping uh, yourself composed and stuff like that. And when you lose your temper, when you explode and you do these things and go down to their level, what happens? Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Ha 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 ha. I got you to lose your cool. I got you to act like me. And see, you're no better than me because you get mad or angry just like I do. Na 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 na. That's what these, and that's, that is literally the mentality of these people. Of these prodding, prating devils that walk around making video after video attacking people and stuff like that. And feeding off the frenzy of the uh, attention that they are getting. Okay? What wisdom is in them? Okay? He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. Feet, where are your feet taking you? Cutteth off the feet, meaning you're not going to grow. And drinketh damage, poison. Poison, you know, uh, high fructose corn syrup, soda pop, okay? Drinketh damage. Scripture is likened unto pure water, like milk. 
<laughs> what are you drinking? What, what, you know, like for example, the individual from Monday and the individual who we're going to see who got influenced by Carl Jung, a wicked, satanic philosopher who's in hell, I, th I think he's dead, who's burning in hell. But yet he was a Christian. Ooh. Verse 7. The legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. Stone in a sling to be used as a weapon of offense or offense, like an offensive, you know. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so the fool returneth to his folly. Another, uh, another shot you can take at easy believism. Just believe and receive. You, you should try to abstain from things, but don't worry if you don't. You can you're, you just believe and save yourself, so go ahead. So you can have your little shot of religiosity, save yourself by your own belief, and then go back to the very stew of vomit that you want to get away from, but you justify it by your own belief. Who are sensationalists, actually? Like the Athenians that, you know, get captivated by every new thing. Okay, I've seen it with the videos that are being made against the guy from Monday. Okay, which, you know, yeah, there's a time and place for everything. But, I mean, there are all kinds of these guys jumping on this bandwagon. And the more they do that, the more his popularity grows. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? Now check this out. There is more hope of a fool than of him. That's not saying that much. A fool says in his heart there is no God. And someone who is wise in their own conceit. What more conceited thing could there be than believing that you are your own God? Think about that. Think about that. Verse 12 there is, <laughs> Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? I save myself by my own belief. I'm more righteous than God by saying I forgive Satan and love Satan. Somebody actually said that. Yeah, they do it. Uh, Monday's video will be in the description box for you. Okay, I, I'm not naming that man's name. I'm not going to do it. I don't even have a cute and clever little adjective for him. Okay. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. And that's not much. Someone who says in their heart there is no God, that, that's pretty hard to overcome. Only the Lord can do that. But see, there's more hope of a person who says in their heart there is no God, capital G, but when you encompass someone who says in their heart there is no God, what has replaced that? Themselves? You see? That, that's, that's a, if there was a double whammy. And of course, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Now you need to see this. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis, by the way, means beginning. And everything that is contrary to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, gets its basis in Genesis 3. Let's read verses 1 under verse 5. Oh, uh, no. Verses 1 under verse 7. Now God said in Genesis chapter 2, Don't eat of the tree. That's a work. 
That's a clear instruction not to do something. Don't do that. You can do anything else, but don't do that. That's a work, Jack. With every, yeah, yeah. It was not by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Okay? That's a work. And even one of these wicked free gracers who shot off of just rambling, even, you know, when you corner them, even they will have to, unless, unless they're idiots like Jack Smack and, and, and put the, you know, want to keep up a facade, um, they're going to have to eventually. It's like, okay, yeah. In the Garden of Eden, it was not by grace through faith. No, it wasn't. And you got idiots who was like, it was by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. You're stupid. Willfully ignorant. But anyway. Now the serpent, dead old devil Satan, was more subtle than any beast in the field which the Lord God had made. And yes, God made Lucifer. But see, Lucifer fell because he was taken by his own brightness. Satan, accuser, tempter. Okay? Okay. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. Textual criticism. Yea, did God really say that? Well, the Greek says, It could be rendered, Yea, hath God said. Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman, Eve, said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, he said that, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Uh, you on your own time, the verse that you want to look at is verse 17 in Genesis 2. But of the tree of the knowledge, uh, Genesis 2, 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die. He doesn't say anything about touching it. Eve added, Neither shall you touch it. Neither shall is, where is that? Neither shall you touch it. And in this copy of the scriptures, seventeen and three are like right side by side. Okay. So now think about this. God said in verse seventeen, "Don't eat it." That's a work. Eve added, "Don't touch it." So did she have for a moment her righteousness was a little bit more than God's? Yeah, throw that one into the equation there, brother. Think about that one. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die instantaneously. They died spiritually instantaneously yet, but their actual lifespan did not go instantly, which is presumed that's what they thought would happen the minute that they disobeyed God. An annual had to die instantly, yes, but they themselves, they died spiritually, but physically, it wasn't instantly. And that's what Satan was going off of. For God doth know, verse 5, that in the day ye eat thereof, do what, do contrary to what God said, it's a work, okay? Then your eyes shall be opened, Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Because they take it upon themselves to judge upon themselves what is good and what is evil. When God said specifically in verse 17 in Genesis 2, don't do that. It's bad. Okay? God is the only one who truly knows what is good and what is evil. And to judge a right, you need his perfect standard, the authorized version. So when someone says, I'm not going to do what God said, but I'm going to take it upon myself to judge what is good and what is evil, you are fulfilling that right there. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, take it upon yourself, then your eyes shall be open, you'll be able to see, but your mind will be blinded, and ye shall be as gods, that's a lowercase g. I think in one of the Bibles, I think that some of the Bibles actually put a capital G in some of these uh, disgusting Bibles. Okay, I, I make the distinction. The authorized version, scriptures. Anything else is a Bible, a collection of books. Okay? And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You shall be able to judge for yourself 
apart from God. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, what she saw, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, sin always looks so beautiful, doesn't it? And a tree to desire to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. They done messed up. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Yeah, they were bare butt naked in the Garden of Eden. Yes, they were. And there was no shame because there was no sin. They deliberately chose to disobey what God said. God said, don't do that. That's a work, genius. And they did contrary to that. And if you were to read verse 8, let's read verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. Question, how does a voice walk? In Genesis chapter 1, it says the Spirit, capital S, was on, upon the waters. How does a voice walk? needs a body, right? And the Word became flesh. What does this mean? They saw God in the Garden of Eden. Hebrews 11 verse 1, you go check that. Faith was not necessary in the Garden of Eden. Okay? Okay? Don't eat. They ate. It was a work. They saw God. It was not by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Any of you free gracers who uh, hold to it was by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden, you are a stupid idiot. Okay, Jack Smack? You are a stupid idiot. Okay? Even, even some free gracers, not all of them, because they got to hold on to their false doctrine with a death grip. But there are some fake gracers out there who, who when they look at the evidence, it's like, okay, it's clearly a work, and it's clearly not by grace through faith. I mean, come on. They saw God in the garden. What's Hebrews 11 verse 1? You go find out. Okay? Give me a break. Anyway. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They saw God. Faith was not required. You don't need faith when you can see him. That's why it's not by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven period, that thousand years, because Jesus Christ is going to be on a throne in Jerusalem. And you got these idiots telling you it's by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven. No, it is not. No, it is not. That's why the Sermon on the Mount is all works. Okay? Alright? Please, people, please understand that. that. That's very, very, very simple. Okay? Uh, John chapter 8. But see, when you take it upon yourself to do contrary to what God has said, John chapter 8, verses 43... And 44. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. Eve saw that it was a tree to make one wise. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. You are your own God. It comes from yourself. Okay? Kind of like Buddhism. And any other thing that is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saint. Okay? When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay? It, it, Satan cannot be redeemed. Satan's fate is sealed. Okay? Prove that in Monday's video. 
and again, and if you're, I mean, if you're a novice and you fall for some of the stupidity that the uh, from the individual, he's not an idiot. He's following orders. Okay, that's it's a deliberate um, um, psychological operation that he's engaging in. If you are choosing to fall for that guy that we spake about Monday, uh, I have no pity or anything for you. All I can say is live it up. Okay, live it up. All right. Now let's go to First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one. Man, it's hot in here. <laughs> it's not really hot. It's, it's uh, here in the Midwest, here in Illinois, the humidity, the humidity just absolutely is atrocious. Hebrew, ah, uh, Hebrews. First Corinthians chapter one. Verses 18 on to verse 21. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The cross. The cross. The cross. What is the cross? The cross is death. The cross is death to yourself. And dying to your self-righteousness. And that's foolishness unto the lost. Who calls the wisdom of God foolishness? The world who are their own gods. Okay? For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Now, there is a prudence that is linked unto the fear of the Lord, but there is another type of prudence linked unto that wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay, there are only two wisdoms. Okay? Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? See, verse 20 is telling you what kind of wisdom is being addressed in verse 19. It is not the uh, fear of the Lord. It is the wisdom of this world, which is earthly, sensual, devilish, which is promoted by Satan, who is a fan of flesh. Okay? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? It says it right there. Okay, the wisdom of this world. Earthly, sensual, devilish. Perfectly exhibited in the video that we, that we did on Monday. Okay? Verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now, don't get confused by verse 21. See, you're not saved. You're a Christian. Save yourself by your own belief. But you might look at that and say, wait a minute. No, no, no. no. See, there are two wisdoms. And the wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish is being addressed here. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God, which is the fear of the Lord, the world by wisdom, fear of man, that wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish, knew not God, because that wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish, you are your own God. You decide what is good and what is evil. It pleased God by the foolishness, who calls this foolish? But the world that says in their heart there is no God except themselves. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Go back now to Proverbs 26. Go back now to Proverbs 26. We want verses 18 on to verse 21. Very interesting. Boy, it's hot in here. Humid in here, I should say. 18 on to 21 in Proverbs 26. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death. The wages of sin is death. Pray for Satan. Love Satan. Save yourself by your own belief. Those two free grace... And the Jesus that that imbecile is preaching, they go together hand in hand. 
because at the center of both is themselves. They are their own gods. So is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Sport! Again! The man of yes of Monday's video is reveling, relishing in the attention that he's getting from all these people. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that ugly smile on his face and his Jesuitical dead eyes. He's loving it. He's living it, man. It's sport. It's, it's a sport to him. I mean, very similar to his Christian brother in Blackpool. Uh, Proverbs 10. It's a sport to these people. Okay? It's, 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 it's a professional wrestling angle with the heel and the baby face. Okay? You people need to wake up to this. Proverbs 10, 23 and verse 27. Okay? Uh, let's read in uh, Proverbs 26 again. Uh, what verse is that? Uh, verse 19. So is the man that is deceived, that deceiveth his neighbor, and saith, Am not I in sport? Proverbs 10, verses 23 unto 27. It is as sport to a fool who says in his heart, There is no God, to do mischief. But a man of understanding, departing from evil, hath wisdom, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. See, all of you people who say in your heart there is no God and save yourself by your own belief or think your righteousness is more than God's, then the thing that you fear the most will come upon you. You're going to be dethroned. Like it says in Ezekiel 28, I believe it is. 20, between 27 and 28, it's like, you'll say, how dare you, I'm realizing this. What you say in your heart, you are God. But you shall be, die like a man. See, when all you people who say in your heart, there is no God except for yourself, the little G God, and think your righteousness is more than God's, and you save yourself by your own belief, Okay, um, when you are dethroned from your little throne of king nothing, your fear will come upon you. And what greater fear is, think about this brother, sister, think about this. What greater fear than to recognize, to be made aware of your own mortality and guess what? You ain't your own little God. What a frightful thing that must be. The fear of the wicked shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. The whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. And what foundation are these evil people basing their thing off of? Oh, uh, you know, Peter, right? The false Peter that's given to them of Rome. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the slugger to them that send him. Verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Back to Proverbs 26, continuing on um, to verse... 21. Verse 20. Here's how you defeat these people who relish in the attention. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. I, dude, the, the, the imbecile that the Monday's video was based upon, I'm not going to do a second one. I'm not. I mean, the free grace people are making video after video after video after video. And even the, the guy from Blackpool on one of his myriad of his sock accounts is addressing him. You know, it's like, 
giving this guy this attention. And that smug, egotistical, pompous look on his face. He's just loving it. Feeding the fire. Verse 21. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. And that's reminiscent in all these guys who all like Elmer from New York, the jerk from Blackpool, that other guy who's Monday that we talked about on Monday, uh, then some of the guys from Canada, a lot of people here in America, okay? They kindle a fire because all they do is attack people. Okay? Okay? Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Isaiah 29. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Wherefore the Lord said. Now this also encompasses the video that we're going to watch today as well. Okay? We're, doing, we're going through the scriptures first because giving you the truth, then we're going to see this nonsense. Brethren recommended this, and even the heretics, you know, said it's like you should, and amen to that, okay? Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, because they are their own God. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Just believe and receive. Okay? Oh, uh, we should forgive Satan and love him. Self-righteousness. Uh, you know, these guys will never say there is no God with their mouth. But they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Love Satan, praise for Satan, forgive Satan. Uh, that God isn't doing that. God's not going to do that. So you're more righteous than God. Save yourself by your own belief. It's, brother, it's professional wrestling. <laughs> it really is. It really is. You got the baby faces, the good guys, supposedly, free gracers. You got the heel coming in. I'm not going to mention his name. Stirring up the crowd, and it's all a performance. It's all a performance. With the suspension of disbelief is that one is saved and one is lost. They're both serving the devil. They're like peas and carrots. Like yin and yang. You can do better, huh? You can do better. <laughs> Good luck, pal. Therefore, verse 14. Behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. They're, those of the world who uh, separateth themselves and intermittleth with all wisdom. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are done in the, in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Let's read, uh, yeah, 16. Surely your turning of, the, of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay if this counsel or work be amended will come to naught. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? And of course, uh, another really good place where we can go to this. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to 23. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. 
because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are cre cre clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? We're not little gods. Okay, we're not. But see, you want evidence that God exists? If the mirror can take it, look at look at yourself in the mirror, okay? But no, no, these idiots, like evolutionists. Woohoo! You evolved for millions and billions and trillions of years. Brilliant! And you call me crazy. Yeah. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, only up here, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Who says in his heart there's no God, capital G, so to behave foolishly is to behave as if professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. First thing mentioned. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Uh, and now go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, read, we're going to read verses 25 on to 29. <sighs> because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And who calls what God does foolish? Christians. Lost people. Self-theists, evolutionists. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh. It doesn't say that any. It says many. Not many. Why? Because these people who are wise have men after the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are called. Why? Because they can they have a greater temptation to fall back within themselves. Well, I did I this I am noble. That's why not many. That's why God prefers the small and despised thing. It does not say that no uh, wise men after the flesh. No mighty men, no noble shall be called. It doesn't say that. Not many. Why? Because they have it harder than us poor folk. Because they got themselves to fall back onto. Like this Kennedy guy we're going to see. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, worldly wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Ah, Christianity! Mighty Christianity! If Christ had a church, it'd be the biggest one. And look at all the flavors of the buffet line of Christianity. Yeah. And base things of the world and things which are despised the way, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. That's why he chose the cross. God! Who was on that cross? You see, and that, you wicked Trinitarians, okay, <laughs> you're second God who is not God the Father according to you guys 
was the one who died on the cross according to the Trinitarian. Description box, we talk about that in the video, okay? But see, that's why he chose the cross. The spies, when you were on the cross, you had no rights. You were nailed up there naked. People could do anything they want to you. Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. That's why not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise men after the flesh. I just got that backwards, yes. But that's why not many mighty. Why? Because they can glory in their flesh. More so than one of us poor people that was pulled out of the dung. Second Corinthians chapter, uh, First Corinthians chapter two, verses one on to verse eight. Now, brethren, when I came to you, now this is this is relative to what we're going to see in this video. Man's wisdom, Carl Jung. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Or what? Keep reading. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified, who is actually truly saved. That's what he means. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. That's the wisdom Paul's talking about in verse 1. It's not talking about absent of the fear of the Lord. Like a lot of Christians, Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. Uh, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, submitting yourself in the fear of God. Okay, uh, everything Paul did was in the fear of the Lord. Okay, the, what he was talking about, what wisdom was, man's wisdom, earthly, sensual, devilish but in demonstration of the capitalist spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Having a form there, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. When you have God the Father dwelling in you, you have in you He who created the heaven and the earth. Yeah, need I go on? But see, when you replace that with yourself, then you come up with all these man's wisdom and these you you use all these fancy schmancy words to give off this appearance that you're something that you're not to replace something that should be there and isn't, meaning the Lord. Okay. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, not sinlessly perfect, but perfect in heart toward the Lord. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. If this counsel or wisdom be of men, it, uh, be of men, it will come to naught. But if be of the war, uh, but if it be of the Lord, you can't overthrow it. That's in the book of Acts. Go find it. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of the world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Why can you not understand my speech? Uh, on that, on that, uh, oh, we address that here in a little bit, okay? In a little bit, all right? Now, go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 9. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and on to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus Christ is wisdom, fear the Lord. He is knowledge. He is our hope. Okay? 
I'm writing this down. For the tread the jewels of wisdom. Okay? And I say this, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Oh, how self-righteous you are. If you are more righteous than God, you forgive Satan, love Satan, and pray for him. How righteous are you when you circumvent brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, calling the, the lesser calling on the greater when you save yourself by your own belief. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk, a, walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding there with, therein with thanksgiving. Beware! Lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Proverbs 25, just one verse. Proverbs 25, yesterday's proverb. Proverbs 25, uh, one verse. Actually, we can read verses 1 and 2. But let's read verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But it is but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Go to Matthew 13. Glory of God to conceal a thing. And he and he hasn't done this stuff in a corner. It's there for all to see. But Matthew 13, 9 on verse 15. Matthew 13, 9 on to verse 15. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. You think, you know, you guys who say in your heart, you think you have something. But the more truth you have, and the more you rationalize it away, you think you have something, you're going to lose it even more. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Because they seeing, they see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6, 9 and 10. This was even in the margin. Isaiah 6, verses 9 and 10. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they should see, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Well, wait a minute. Why? Why is that? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's very simple. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses uh, 12 on to verse 14. Now we, saved people, have received not the spirit of this world. Philosophy, man's wisdom. That wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. But the spirit, lowercase s, one that is imparted, which is of God that we might know the things 
that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, like Carl Jung, but which the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Spiritual things. The Lord within you. That's not a capital S, that's true. Spirit with spiritual things. The authorized version. But the natural man, unregenerate, not saved. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God, the Lord Himself. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Shut their ears. It's foolish to them. They don't want they they, they don't want to believe it. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Oh and we won't we won't continue. You read that on your own time. Now go back to Colossians chapter two sixteen. Not Revelation. 16. On to verse 23. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath. Gotta, gotta mention this. There are heretics out there who want to take Christ's mass and say and weave it into this that well you know you're judging me in, a, in regards of a holy day the holy day that is being mentioned here are the ones that are specifically given in scripture Christ's mass was created by Satan it is a satanic Roman Catholic pagan holiday Okay, and you got these guys that come around it's like you can't judge me in regards of a holy day. Trying to how what blasphemy saying that something that was created by Rome is a holy day. It's a holiday, not a holy day. But see, and then they, they get cute. It's like, well, that's the day I want to worship God. Figures you would go to that to justify your sin, justify Rome. Okay? Verse 16, holy day, holy day, is referencing onto the holy days prescribed in Scripture. Not the ones given of Rome, you devil! The Lord rebuke you, but hey, all things are lawful for you. Yes, they are. Yes, they are, and you hide behind that to justify yoking yourself up with the Vatican on December 25th. Then you get all cute and say that, you know, well, you're against, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, you're against charity. And they mean the same, charity and liberty mean the same thing, don't they, you little idiot? Yeah, <laughs> I had to mention that, brother. Sorry, I had to. Which are a shadow of the things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. And no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. No marvel that his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Righteousness, Disbelieve and receive. Oh, how righteous art thou to forgive Satan and love Satan and pray for him when God himself won't even do that. Yeah. Let no man beguile you of your reward of in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, capital H, the Lord Jesus Christ, from which all the body, by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, 
If ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men. Which things have indeed a shew of wisdom and, and well worship, like uh, recovering alcoholics and recovering drug addicts, whose higher power is a bottle of water, okay? By their own will, you know, that's the thing about the, the you know, changed life, changed life, changed life. Yes, a changed life will come from you being a new creature. See, you, you, dude, you got to drop that. Did your life change? Did your life change? Did your life change? What brought about that changed life? Was it being made a new creature by having the Lord seal you? Or because you just did something in yourself? Got to watch it with that. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Oh, and we're going to see a very good example of that. Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. Verses 6 on to verse 12. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Every one turned to his course, as the horse rusheth into the battle, who says at the shaking of the spear, Ha ha! No one says, What have I done? All oh, these free gracers were dropping F bombs and justify sin to the moon. What have I done? None of them say that. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times. And the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. No, they don't. You know why? Because they don't judge themselves first. They refuse to do judgment. Oh, they'll judge others. They'll judge others. But see, it begins, if judgment begins at the house of God, Saints, you judge yourself first by the perfect standard, and that enables you to judge others by the same standard you judge yourself. But see, these guys don't judge their own selves. They do, but not by a perfect standard, but the standard of themselves. How do ye say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Especially with the free gracers. And they don't even judge themselves. Only God can judge me. And he does that through scripture. Yeah. Lo, certainly in vain may he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? What wisdom is in the free gracer? That wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. What wisdom is it in these idiots like Jean Bossoff and one of his protégés, apparently the guy from Monday? Huh? What wisdom is in them? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even to the priest, every one dealeth falsely. Covetousness, wanting the attention. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people, say, slightly saying, peace, peace. And there is no peace. Verse 12. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Dropping F-bombs regularly, talking about, yes, drinking alcohol and getting drunk, uh, talking about pornography, justifying this, that, and the other thing. Um, 
saying to pray for Satan, love Satan, forgive Satan, saying you love Satan. Huh. And you're, yeah, you're a Christian, all right. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 11. Now see, when someone gets to a point like that, the impossible is possible with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But see, when there is a point when someone will go so far away from the truth and get so deluded in their brains, like the guy from Monday, okay? The impossible is possible with God. Even with that devil from Blackpool, the impossible is possible. But see, those two guys specifically have gone so far. They have a working knowledge of what is actually truth. That's why they go so far against it. But see, they have gone so far past the point of no return. They've gone so far that for them to come back is nearly impossible. But the impossible is possible with God. Is it probable? No. No. Guy from Blackpool, he ain't going to get saved. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. But I, I'm, just taking, I'm just making a very safe, educated guess. Same with the guy from Monday, Monday's video. That guy ain't gonna be saved. There's no way. The impossible is possible with God. See, the minute you say something is impossible in that sphere of things, that's heresy. That is. But remember, it's not by gunpoint. Okay? You gotta remember that. The guy from Monday's video, he's not gonna be saved. If the impossible happens and he does get saved, hey, hey, it's like if I get up, if we get up there and we see Ruffman, hey, hey, Lord, can I have that uh, humble pie? Can you give me some crow? Just throw it at hey, in heaven, I don't got to worry about my big belly. So well, serve it up. I'll eat it all day. Guys like that, they've gone too far. And there is a point in someone, man or woman, where they go too far. It's not that the Lord can't save them. God's not going to do it at gunpoint. Then you come to Jeremiah 11, 13 and 14. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Jer Judah, little g. And according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense to, unto Baal, and on her heads, the names of blasphemy. Look at all the denominations of Christianity. Look at the smorgasbord. Why, why is Christianity so divided? Huh? Why is there so many denominations? Methodist, Methodist, Catholic, uh, Presbyterian, King James Bible believer. That's just another denomination now. Why is it so diluted? Why is it so... Why are there so many? Because Christianity is not of God. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Muslims, atheists can figure that one out. Therefore, verse 14... Pray not thou for this people. Neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear, hear them in the, in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. And people will go to 2 Timothy like we're supposed to pray for all men. But why? So that we may live a peaceable and quiet life as ambassadors for Christ. When you got a guy who's already made his choice to serve Satan in the Vatican, who's gone so far... Um, Pray that the Lord may uh, cast his judgment upon them. But we are not to pray for their good when they have gone that far. Okay? John 17. 
John 17. Let, let's, let's prove this. Let's prove this. Okay, John 17. And see, the guy I, I've mentioned about Monday, we're almost at two hours. We're at an hour and 45 minutes. Th th that guy doesn't back up anything with Scripture. That's what we do here. John 17, verse 9. I pray for them. This is actually the Lord's Prayer. Okay? The Our Father is not the Lord's Prayer. This is actually the real Lord's Prayer. Okay? John 17. Verse 9. You got red words? Who's saying this? You know, like in Revelation, uh, the red words where the Lord says, I hate. God loved Jacob, but hated Esau, by the way. Didn't say that God hated Esau's sin. Said that he hated Esau. Huh. And also, got a, a little wabbit. It does not say verbatim that God hates Satan. It also does not say verbatim that Jesus said, I am God. It also said in Scripture does not say Jesus said, I am the Messiah. Verbatim, no. It doesn't. Jesus said, I am. That's all he needed to say. Did he say, I am God? No, he didn't. That's, the, that, that's something that guy from Monday brought up. That's a stupid argument. Jesus never said, I am God. No, he didn't. You're right. He said, I am. That's all he needed to say. He never said, I am the Messiah. He said, he who speaketh unto thee am he. Affirming to the woman in the well in John chapter 4 that he's the Messiah. But you're right. Jesus never said, I am the Messiah. He never said that. You're right. You're right, you wicked devil. Uh, it does not, God doesn't say, I hate Satan. Um, he doesn't need to. He shows, especially in Revelation 20, when Satan is cast into the lake of fire to burn forever, that uh, God does not love Satan. <laughs> but look at verse 9 I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine don't look at me look at that verse that's the Lord's prayer he said I don't pray for the world the world, li the, the, the world lies in wickedness Okay. Oh, 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 15 and 16. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And see, our task as saints is to be ambassadors for Christ. For Christ. And speak his words unto the lost. That's how you love your enemies. And 1 John 4, see, we are not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Christianity is of the world. The guy from Mundi, he is of the world. 1 John 4, 5 and 6. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Hey, you can take it upon yourself to save yourself by just thinking about it. Believe and receive. Hey! How much more righteous are you than that mean old God when you can do something that God will not do? Love Satan, forgive Satan, and pray for Satan. You see how this works? How those devils are all, at the end of the day, working to the same end? They're of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. Because they're smooth and it tickled people's ears. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we. The lowercase s. Spirit of truth and the spirit of error. 
Now, check this out. This was a video that a dear brother sent. Okay, ah, not that far. Okay. Interact. This is now, we, we already went through all the scriptures. A lot. All right, come on. Get, get to the beginning, all right? This is JFK's kid. In the description box, there will be a video about uh, talking about how the Jesuit order assassinated Kennedy. The individual who did the video, uh, Eric John Phelps, if you don't know who he is, good. That guy, crazy. But his work about the Jesuit order is spot on. Uh, JFK was a Catholic. JFK was an odious Catholic because he wanted to do things his own way apart from the Vatican. Therefore, the Jesuit order had uh, Kennedy assassinated. Uh, listen to the video that will be in the description box about how the Jesuit order assassinated Kennedy. Okay? It's like, the Catholics kill their own? They do that all the time. They do, their, they do that all the time. Okay? But this is JFK's kid, RFK Jr., okay? Or whatever. But um, listen to what he says and note the, ph the philosophy and note what isn't said and note the self-exhortation of him being his own God. Now, this guy's got a gravelly voice, okay? And incidentally, sorry if there's an echo. I, I don't know what to do about that, so... Check this out. Check this out. Within a year after my dad's death, I was addicted to heroin. I was addicted for 14 years. I went when I was 28 years old. And during that period, when I was in early recovery, is when all of these things started to make sense to me. My Catholic upbringing. Uh-oh, Catholic upbringing. Yes, and there you see... Uh, what's his name, Kennedy, and uh, what's her name? Okay, they were Catholics. But see, JFK there, or whatever, he wanted to do well for America apart from the Vatican's plan for America, which you see being uh, produced today. And hence... JFK was odious. JFK was worse to the Catholic and the Catholic eyes than even a saint. Okay? Like I said, uh, the one video done by that crazy whack job, JFK, uh, excuse me, uh, John, Eric John Phelps, okay? Don't, don't look into him. He's, his stuff on the Jesuits is good, but uh, Eric John Phelps, that, he is a nutcase okay but the video will be in the description box okay all of this confluence of philosophy and theology and self-examination and, and pain that you go through mm -hmm. we we grow through pain yes we do and you see that demonstrated in catholics with self-flagellation beating sin out of them and notice philosophy and the Jesuits, which is Roman Catholicism, are philosophers. And what did we already look at? That's why we looked at all this first before we went into this, okay? You know, pain is ultimately the touchstone of spiritual growth. And True. addicts have a unique opportunity for redemption because they've been to hell. No, they haven't. <laughs> but, see... Addicts. He was a heroin addict. Hot. Okay. He's had a change. Mr. Kennedy here had a changed life, pal. Is it because he's a new creature? Or because he did it? It destroys your life and it destroys your relationships and it hurts everybody that you love and it makes you into a liar whenever you're living against conscience which you're doing if you're addicted you push God over the periphery which of your God? horizon so there is there is you know a complete disconnection I feel like I was 
like a one-dimensional human being, you know, that I was a collection of appetites that needed to be fed all the time, and that becomes a full-time job. That's when a I good finally description. got this over, I came in, you know, with my life wrecked, and I came in on my knees, and I made the decision. I knew I needed a spiritual realignment. Mm. And then I picked up this book by Carl Jung called... Carl Jung. A philosopher. Uh, I remember so, uh, way back when I was a babe talking about, you know, Carl Jung and that he, this man was, this guy is a philosopher. This guy is a devil. This guy is roasting in hell. This guy was evil. Carl Jung. But he picked up a book of philosophy written by man. And him being a Catholic and the authorized version, of course, being at the top of the list of the forbidden books, right? Man's wisdom. He he was an addict. He has a changed life. How did his change come about? On synchronicity, it was a kind of synchronicity that it was sitting on a table. And the reason I picked it up was because there was an album by the police that had just been... Okay. Worldly music made him pick up a spiritual book by a Christian philosopher that brought him to God? <laughs> which God? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, which, which God? I, I think all of you, uh, even you uh, nominal people out there, would be, okay, that, that's kind of obvious. I would mean, at, mean, at least hope, okay? And released, and it had the same name, and I didn't know what the word was. Mm -hmm. So I picked it up out of curiosity. And synchronicity is a coincidence. It's a, it's a coincidence. Basically, yeah. If you're a saint, sooner or later you're going to realize that coincidences don't exist. Nothing ever just happens. There's always something with it. There's always. I mean, you could be, well, what about chance? Okay, who is the author of the chance? Okay, well, what about a flat tire? Well, you've been riding on it for a while. Something happened, something happened, something happened, something happened to cause that effect. Okay, um, coincidences do not exist. Unless you're a Catholic, unless you're lost, then, hey, all kinds of coincidences. They don't exist. Okay? It's like one of those things that happens to all of us when, when we start noticing them, it happens more often. An example would be you're talking about somebody who you haven't seen or thought about in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And the phone rings and it's that person on the phone. And these little things happen to us all the time, right? Now, see... What he's talking about, you, what he said, you know, you were thinking about someone, next thing they, they call, right? That can be weaved into the think it and achieve it. Like what is taught in this. This right here, it might, it might be just as good as Mr. Carl Jung. Okay? <laughs> seriously. Seriously. Okay? Seriously. All right? Oh, okay. Let's continue. Hey, and Jung, the link for this video will be in the description box. Interventions by God who would reach through the universe and break all of his own rules, the rules of mathematics, okay. arithmetic, and percentages of chance, and of time and space would reach through and do these little things. <laughs> to touch us on the shoulder and kind of say, you know, I'm here, and you're looking at a miracle. So, now what he just said was that Carl Jung said that these things were of God. Which God? Okay. But see, God will not do contrary to his word. God will not do contrary to his word. Okay? Won't do that. If he did, then what good is this? 
like I said, the link, I, I know I'm pausing it. You can watch. I'll, this, this will be in the description box so you can see it yourself. And Jung was a deeply spiritual man. Sure Jung was. began having these very authentic spiritual experiences see that? when he was a kid. And he see that? the dreams that he had. The dreams that he had. Synchronicities on the Vikings, uh, the Jesuit cross there, dragons, serpents. Carl Jung, and th this was a saved man and had dreams and visions? I think perhaps maybe not. There are authentic spiritual experiences that well, sure. guided. They were, look at that! That's from Carl Jung, apparently. Yes, they were. It's like these idiots who say, well, I've seen God. You've seen something. Yes, you have. I ain't denying that. But you've seen an angel of light. Okay, you've seen a devil. Carl Jung was not a saved man. He was a devil. Okay? Look at that. His life in this extraordinary way. What he says is that I can't use empirical tools and scientific tools to prove the existence of a God. Yes, you can. That I can prove that having seen tens of thousands of patients come through his hospital, that people who believe in God get better faster and that the recovery is more durable and enduring. Mm -hmm. Those that believe in a God or believe in God, so you save yourself by your own belief? Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Now, this man is going to make a statement that's going to floor you. And for me, reading that was much more impactful than if he had said that he had proven the existence of a God, which I would not have believed. Right. What he was saying was, it's irrelevant if there's a God up there or not. Mm -hmm. It's irrelevant if there's a God up there or not. Now, what this guy is saying ties in with easy believism, the guy with the, it, it, because why? It's all from the same source. Earthly, sensual, devilish people. I, I've, I've watched this video and thank you, brother. This is terrifying. But see, what he is saying is virtually identical to free grace. To any flavor of Christianity that isn't the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. If you believe in one, your chances of living a healthier life and of recovery are better, and it's an easier path. And at that point in my life, I had made a vow that I would do anything, Who is he vowing anything to? at all, if it increased my chance of recovery by even. By 1%. If you believe in a God, oh, like the God of the bottle, if you pun intended, the God that you look at in the mirror. See, name it and claim it, nab it and blab it. You can produce things by your own thoughts. You are your own God. You save yourself by your own belief. Do you see how that ties in? Easy believism. Circumvent brokenness. Circumvent contrition. Circumvent the fear of the Lord. Calling upon the name of the Lord is a work. Repentance is a work. The object of... What's the object of faith there? If you believe in a God. The belief. That's what he's saying. What is the object of the belief there? The belief itself. Even one percent. But I made a decision. I'm going to start believing in God because it's going, to, it's going to improve my chance for God. I believe. I made the decision. Do, 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 do. Just believe and receive. Do, 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 do. Okay, I believe and receive. Oh, now hey, I can continue living as a devil. But hey, I believe in receive. So no matter what I do, I'm still going to go ahead because I saved myself because I made the decision. Now remember, God doesn't force you to uh, to say yes or no. No, He doesn't. But see, 
number one, he went to a man, philosophy, okay? And the object of the faith is the faith itself. You shall be as gods. Coming from a Catholic upbringing, Satan's church. And then I, I'm confronted with the dilemma of how do you start believing in something that you can't see or smell or touch or taste or hear or acquire with your senses. And Jung solves that problem by saying, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. Let that sink in. Fake it till you make it. What happens to the free gracer when they no longer have faith in their faith? Because the free gracer's faith is in their faith. Oh, they say it's in the dead, but no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Hmm? as if, and he said, the faith will precede the evidence, that there will be evidence that will be overwhelming. I immediately, while I was reading this book, I said, okay, this is the answer, so I'm just going to start pretending there's a God up there, that he's looking at me all the time, and that life is kind of a test, and that, you know, we're supposed to do the right thing, and, and I'm supposed to behave myself even when I don't have an audience, so even when nobody's watching me. The day I finished that book, I went out on a volleyball field. I was playing volleyball. Satan will sometimes, ooh, ooh, Satan will sometimes be allowed to give a sign or a wonder. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. God already knows the end from the beginning. It's to you yourself that the burden of proof is being here. To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice and ye shall serve and cleave unto Him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So, and he said, I'll, I'll, okay, I'm going to pretend that there is. And then this happens. And somebody hit the ball on a very, very powerful punch and went way up and then it came down and hit the top of the post. And it made this errant flight back up again. And as it was relaunching, I said, so that everybody on the field heard me, I said, that ball's going to get hit by a Mack truck. I don't know why I said that. I have no idea. But everybody heard me say it. And the ball went up. It landed on a chain link fence. And then it bounced on the other side. And it rolled down about 40 yards into a main thoroughfare. And this giant... Stop. 18 wheel diesel came by and popped it with just a resounding pop. And everybody looked at me for a second or like, wow, how'd you do that? Oh, at that point, I, I had just finished this book about synchronicity. And I was like, okay, I can either just dismiss that the way that I would, okay. it's a weird coincidence, okay. or I can just say that, you know, this is you know, this is God's way of talking to me, and I'm going to accept that, and I'm going to accept the beauty of it. This is God's way of talking to me. The, the link for that video will be in the description box for you if you're interested. This is God's way of talking to me. 
through carnal worldly music and a book on philosophy and then a sign and a wonder comes to pass. How do you do that? Luke chapter 4. And we'll be done. Luke chapter 4. Oh, verses 5 on to 7. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. That's what that guy from Monday, he, he's worshiping the devil. And Again, I hope the devil is giving him his best life now. That's going to be it for this video, brethren, people. Be, be really careful with what wisdom you're being offered. Be very careful. Thank you for, uh, thank you for watching this if you do. Uh, we love you. Uh, thank you to the brethren. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. We love you, and Lord willing, we'll see you in the next video.